Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Intel Core i7-13700K, but what we're doing different than everybody else is we're actually gonna be pairing this with a B660 motherboard, the ASRock B660 Steel Legend. Now, the reason why I wanted to test this, much like in the last video, if you haven't seen that, I tested the Core i9-13900K with a $15 cooler to see if that would actually work when you go ahead and lower voltages to make it run at stock. The Raptor Lake CPUs run so fast straight out of the box, do you even need a Z-series motherboard anymore? And that's why I wanted to do this test here today. Can we get it running at its factory clocks at a reasonable voltage? Go ahead and use a reasonable cooler so you can save money on a cooler, save money on a motherboard, and you can even save money on RAM by going with something like DDR4, and that would actually allow you to get a more powerful graphics card and make your gaming PC more powerful overall. So all that stuff is what we're gonna be checking out here today. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna do like we did in the last video. So we're taking a look at the Core i7-13700K. We have this guy coming in at stock here with 1.34 volts, basically, is what it's saying, 1.33, 1.34, bouncing in between. At most, it comes in at 5.3 gigahertz. Now, since this isn't a Z-series board, we can't overclock the CPU, but 5.3 gigahertz is going to net you most of the performance that you're going to see. Even running at 5.6 isn't gonna be a massive jump in terms of performance. Uh, we do have the E cores on, so we have eight plus eight for a total of 24 threads. And then if we take a look at the memory, one thing I do wanna mention on this B660 board, I can't get the same memory frequencies as I can on the Z690. So this might be one of the main negative features for not going with Z790 is you may not be able to get as fast a RAM going. But at the end of the day, 3800, I don't have it tuned in, but you can get this down to 14, 14, 14. And this is gonna net you the same latency as something like DDR4 or 4000. You just lose a little bit of bandwidth. So I do want to mention that, but at the same time, we are running gear one, 3,800, no problem. All right, so we're going to skip the OCC T-Test because we're not using like a, a super cheapo cooler. I'm using the AK620 from Deepcool, so we're not going to have any problems with heat from this CPU. So we're just going to jump straight over to Linpack Extreme. All right, we're going to give that a second to fire up. You can see that the V-Core actually lowered once we put stress on there down to 1.304, and then it's jumping back up. So it's basically bouncing anywhere from like 1.3 to 1.34 volts and anywhere in between. Let's take a look at frequency. Uh, as you can see here, the frequency is bouncing all over the place. We're going up, we're going down. Um, yeah, so when you just kind of let the CPU do whatever it wants, it's not able to hold that 5.3 gigahertz that we want it to. Um, so yeah, you can even see on the E cores here, it's supposed to be at 4.2 gigahertz. That's jumping all over the place as well. So right out of the box, this thing is not performing as well as I would have expected. You're getting 5.1 gigahertz. Yes, this is an unrealistic, very heavy workload, but considering how much voltage this thing's pulling and let's take a look at power we're pulling over 200 watts so we're probably throttling the board with how much power this thing is sucking out at stock so this actually doesn't look very good right you just buy a 13700k throw it in a b660 you're not getting the performance that one would expect Let's take a quick look over here at temperatures before we move on. Obviously, it's running into the uh, the second sequence of Linpack, so this is what we're gonna be looking at. But if we take a look at the max temperature, you can see we were actually probably even thermal throttling right out of the box. And with a cooler like this, that definitely shouldn't be happening. Yeah, so now that we're kicking in, you can see 90C, 92. That is just way too hot, especially considering this is a very decent cooler, but it makes sense considering how much power this thing's pulling unnecessarily due to its high voltage. So as I mentioned before, we have the uh, VCCSA that's coming in at 1.25 volts and then the VDDQ also at 1.25 volts. This is the same thing that I ran in the previous video. This is what I run on all of my Alder Lake and Raptor Lake systems. I can get pretty much all the performance I need out of this RAM kit, which is down to motherboard at that point. And then the DRAM we're running at uh, just XMP. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and stop here with stock as obviously the frequencies are having issues and this just isn't running up to par with where I would want this to perform. Alrighty, so after loading back up, these are settings that I went ahead and tweaked a little bit. 
I didn't even push the maximum, to be perfectly honest. I got to a point where I'm like, yeah, this is probably close enough. So anyways, I have the system now running at 1.23 volts. Uh, this will actually go anywhere from like 1.225 up to 1.24. It'll bounce around a little bit. But this is significantly lower than what we were seeing at stock. So let's go ahead and run Linpack Extreme, and we will see how this performs now. All right, so it's firing up. It's going to take a second. Uh, you can see the voltage actually did drop down a smidge going to 1.224. That's uh, what I was seeing beforehand. And let's take a quick look at the power. It'll obviously spike up 95 watts. No, that, that's way too low. The uh, program is still loading up. It'll just take a second. All right, as we can see here, power is ramping up. And this is about where I was seeing it before, around the 140 watt range. So we just dropped 60 watts in power. And uh, all we did was just lower voltage. Obviously, this is a B-series board. I can't really do a whole lot of tuning outside of that. If we take a look at the frequencies, we are now rock solid. 5.3 gigahertz across the board, 4.2 on the E cores. And these will not budge when it's under heavy load. The only time that these will actually adjust is if the load is not stressing out the whole system. So if we take a look at the temperatures, uh, we're sitting comfortably well under 70 C. Um, now this is what I saw before it did hit like 71 after a few runs, but it's basically 70 C. So we were almost thermal throttling before now we're running extremely comfortable and all because we just tuned in our system a little bit more. So anybody who thinks that running a CPU out of the box makes sense anymore, this is more evidence that that is just not true. Now, granted, this might just be a golden sample. It might be a little lower, but even if we added 20, 30, 40 millivolts to this, it's still going to run significantly better than what we were seeing from the stock performance. And considering this is a B-series board, you're going to be much better off running cooler, quieter, and pulling less power, as this will allow you to use even cheaper motherboards, because any motherboards can be able to push 140 watts. And remember, this is under an extreme workload. This is a synthetic workload. So during gaming, the system's not going to be pushed anywhere near this particular limit. All right, and there we go. So past two rounds, no problems, no sweat. And in reality, like I said, I might even be able to get even more power efficient out of this. But in reality, I think that this is good enough. And even if I get it, what, 10 millivolts lower, it's not really going to make much of a difference. The CPU is staying under 70 C or around 70 C under absolute worst case scenario. Voltage 1.225, 1.23. That's pretty good. Power around 140 watts under absolute max worst case scenario. And the frequencies are 100% stable. 5.3 gigahertz on the P cores, 4.2 gigahertz on the E cores. So yes, unless you're pushing for the absolute maximum performance that you can possibly get out of your system, you're going to get 90, 95% of the performance by using a B660 board, simply by lowering your voltage and keeping everything cool and under control. So that's super interesting. Well, alrighty guys, there you have it. So yeah, you can go ahead and use these very powerful CPUs on a very budget-friendly motherboard. You could pair it with something like the Kingston Fury Renegade DDR4 3600C16 kit. I did a video on that. It's much more affordable than Samsung b die at least in dual rank anyway. And you could save money there. You could save money by not getting a Z-series board, still get 5.3 gigahertz, which is plenty fast. Sure, you could probably get a few hundred megahertz more out of the CPU if you have a Z-series board, but in reality, that performance performance is going to be very minimal. We're talking less than 10%. So you can get a system that's going to be, what, $200 cheaper. That's going to be, what, at most 10% slower. So this is really cool. Unlike with Alder Lake, where the, was it, the 12700K came in at 4.7 gigahertz, that was a pretty big gap. You can get 5.2, 5.3, maybe even 5.4 gigahertz out of it. So 10% plus. In this case, you're going to be under 10%, even if you did over overclocking and as I've shown in this video and in the previous video if you tune down the voltages you can get really really low with the stock frequencies which as I've mentioned are already very very fast so to me this is the most exciting part about Raptor Lake is it offers you guys options if you want to save money you can do so in more creative ways without losing much in the way of performance so yeah Intel and AMD shooting for the moon on clock speeds is actually very beneficial for us as the potential customer 
because of these new options. And in reality, if you want to get your gaming experience to that next level, you're better off spending less on your motherboard, spending less on your RAM. Uh, you still need good stuff, but you know, you could spend less than buying top tier stuff and you can go ahead and save money on cooling as well and put all of that extra funds right into your graphics card, which is going to ultimately give you a better gaming experience. So yeah, I was pretty interested to see this. I actually still have the unit running. It's uh, upstairs as my living room gaming PC. I am using the AK620 cooler on there. It works absolutely fine. Running at the 5.3 gigahertz. The motherboard has no trouble at all holding frequencies when it needs to. So ironically enough, with these newer and better CPUs that these guys are coming out with, they're actually making their motherboards and everything else just more and more redundant, which I find very hilarious. Same thing can be said with AMD with their X3D CPUs. Makes the motherboard completely irrelevant, and the same thing with the RAM. You're best off buying the cheapest motherboard possible that will support your chip and the cheapest RAM. Looks like Intel is offering not quite the same thing. You still want to buy decent memory, and you do want to tune that to get the best performance out of your system on the Intel side, but you can still save more money than you could just one generation ago without losing significant performance. So, so I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you are building a PC this holiday season, maybe I just saved you guys a couple hundred bucks. That is awesome. I always like to see that. I love being able to show you guys different options that a lot of other people just don't think about or do not highlight for you. So yeah, if you find this type of content useful, please go ahead and smash that like button. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell and share this around with friends. You know, saving money, especially in today's economy is, uh, you know, that's a good thing. And using less power, also a good thing. So this is, uh, I think that this is useful for a lot of people. Also, if you want to chat with me about this, I go live twice a week with Paul from Not an Apple Fan over on the Techonomics Podcast. Links to that are in the video description down below. So go ahead and subscribe over there as well. So you can chat with me and Paul and any of our guests that we have on. I do want to get Brian from Tech Guest City on. He did a similar video to this not too long ago. Um, I actually messaged him. I'm like, thanks, Brian, for stealing my idea. So Brian and I seem to be on the same wavelength uh, when it comes to this sort of stuff, saving money, going ahead and drawing as little power as possible. So basically finding that nice happy spot between performance and power consumption is becoming a bigger issue. So I'd love to chat with him about that. He said he will be back on. So yeah, anyways, make sure you subscribe over there. And yeah, that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.